knows how to do the play greedy? You do? Come on up. Show me how it's done. Hi. <laughs> and your name is? Yeah. Joe. My name is Sensei Pedro. Nice to meet you. All right. So, awesome job, right? Give a round of applause. My name is Jimmy Pedro. I'm the head instructor here at Pedro's Judo Center. I'm also the head coach of Team USA, and I was the Olympic coach in the 2012 Olympic Games in London. I started my own dojo in 1996, right after the Olympics in Atlanta. I actually opened up in Andover, Massachusetts, and started my own dojo three days a week. What brought me to Wakefield is one of the parents from my dojo, Bobby Sullivan, had five children in my program, and he happened to he happened to own the property that 19 New Salem Street, and he was going to put up this building for his own business. He runs a construction business, and so he said to me, "I'd love to help you put together the ideal dojo. Would you like your own dojo?" I said, "Absolutely, Bobby." So he customized and built this, this training center specifically for the sport of judo and specifically for me um, in Pedro's Judo Center. We basically specialize on, in two different areas. One is the development of, of children, both um, athletically and mentally in, in you know, preparation for life traits. Um, and then on the adult side, we focus on the elite athlete um, who aspires to go to the Olympics. But with that said, I have classes for recreational students, you know, I have 75 year old men in here training judo just to stay fit and stay active and do something fun. And then I have children as young as four years old who are just really learning to, to walk and tumble for the first time. My name is Riley McElwain. I'm the program director and dojo manager here at Jimmy Pedro's Judo Center in Wakefield. And I've been doing the sport of judo for 10 years. Riley, his father was, a, was an older guy when I was a young kid. Well, my father learned judo from Jimmy's father back in the 70s at Peabody at Massasoya Judo Club. And my father learned tremendous things from the Pedro family. And his father was a student of my dad's. So I've known Butch McElwain since I was a little boy. And Riley walked into my door, I think he was 11 or 12 years old when he started judo. My dad actually brought me here a couple years ago when I was much younger, but I just I didn't want to do it, didn't want to do it. And then all of a sudden I said, okay, I'll do it. I won my first tournament. and. I was hooked ever since. And he became quickly uh, one of my junior role model students, one of my storm team, special team of role models. And Riley really embraced this program and what it had to offer. And at the time, I was here 24 seven, leading, guiding, directing. So Riley's a true uh, Jimmy Pedro Judo student who learned everything I know. Judo is my only martial art that I've ever trained. Um, it was kind of the first sport that I really took to. I was never really very good at basketball or baseball or other really kind of average normal sports, but judo kind of, not that I'm very good at judo either, but it kind of stuck with me. And he really became a role model and a leader here at the school who, who embraced the program and, and um, is, a, is a living, breathing of example of what we can do. And many people, when they met Riley for the first time when he was 16 years old, they thought he was 20 or 22 then. He's only 22 now, you know, so uh, he's well beyond his years. So I'm Max Kafka, I'm from Minnesota. Um, I've been doing judo since I was seven years old and I'm just turned 24. Um, I'm an instructor, second degree black belt, um, and an international competitor for Team Force. I started off doing judo with my father, uh, really was to get in shape and uh, more to bond with him. He still does judo back at home and uh, we bonded together doing it and it just kind of became a staple in the family. Uh, so after I graduated from school, I moved to Japan and trained there for a half year. Went to my first international tournament and just got destroyed. Around the world, it's much more accessible than it is here in America. Um, in the numbers of participants is significantly greater than it is here. I mean, the French have about 600,000 judo players in their country uh, that are registered. Japan has, you know, a couple hundred thousand judo players. So Japanese judo, it's, it's different because, you know, they have a lot of, they have the numbers, you know, they have a whole country competing, you know, and they, you just, you get all of them fighting in one room since they're, you know, six or seven years old, and just the cream rises to the top, and you know, it's, 
very technical at times. Not saying that you know American judo isn't technical, but because we have uh, you know less people and they're training like uh, you know maybe a fraction of the time. You know they have to work on unorthodox techniques. I have friends in many of those countries where I could show up on their doorstep and they would say, Jimmy, how are you, brother? Come on in my house. They would feed me. They'd let me sleep there. Like, I've, got, I've made such long-lasting friendships through the sport that there's almost no place that I would go where I wouldn't be able to reach out and pick up the phone or send an email and, and have somebody come pick me up and, and help me. My name is Aaron Kunihiro. I'm 24. I'm an assistant instructor at Pedro's Judo Center. I've been doing judo for 19 years, since I was five. Cooney's a, a superstar athlete. He's, uh, he's one of our best uh, male athletes in the country. I think I can start competing. I didn't start competing right away, maybe when I was like seven. I think just because I was so young, I was only five. I was just like running around the mat. I think the kids like him because they can relate to Cooney. He's almost their same size and he's not this big intimidating person. I did judo for 19 years, obviously I already said that, but um, I just started doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I started last year in January um, and I wrestled since I was from eight years old till high school. He's represented our team in, at many world championships and many international tournaments. My future goal as a judo instructor currently is to produce a national champion, a junior national champion to be specific. So that's anybody under the age of 21. Um, so right now we have kids from seven or eight years old all the way to 15 or 16. So that's the current goal. We have the Junior Olympics in July. Um, my current goal right now is actually I'm training for the 2016 Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. We'll see Cooney step on the mat in, um, at the Olympics in Rio. Make sure you do. You shoot your feet back. You stretch the out forward, but you want to arch. Throw your hips in. Push your hips forward. All that weight and pressure from your hips will help put a lot of founded by Jigoro Kano under the whole mutual prosperity and mutual benefit and welfare of an individual where I don't want to go force with force where I'm going to use your force and momentum against you. Judo translated into English means gentle way. So judo is more of a, again, using their bodies on opponents, momentum and force against them compared to going head to head, if that makes sense. Judo is a very cerebral sport. Um, you have to use your mind a lot, you have to think a lot. It, it involves a lot of strategy and it's almost like chess. Right? A judo, a judo game or a judo match is a chess match. You have to figure out what move they're going to do or what move they're thinking about doing and you have to be one step ahead of them all the time in order to be successful. So um, that helps, I think, judo people become smart as a result, the more crafty, if you will. Some people say it's a feel sport, so you have to kind of be able to feel what's going on around you, feel your partner moving, or feel your opponent moving, where, he's, where you're trying to move him, where they're trying to move you. Unlike other sports where, you know, you think about running a sprint, um, you can really focus, just dial in on certain parts of your body because, you know, you need your lungs to be nice and big, nice and strong, uh, and your legs and your glutes and everything, but, you know, you, you're, you're isolating one part of your body just to perform a specific task. Judo really is, it's, a, it's an all-inclusive sort of like, you're demanding everything from each bit of your body. Push! Work with your partners if you're bigger and stronger than your partners. We have to do the push and pull drills almost is to generate, because in Judo you can throw someone one of two ways. You can throw them forwards or backwards. So, but a, a kid needs to know how to push someone and how to pull someone. In the sport of Judo, you need to throw the other person. You need to take them from their feet and put them onto their back. So the push-pull drills give you a feel. You have to learn where that body and where that person is moving and how, when, when the right time is to let go, almost like a sumo match. If anybody's watched sumo, right? The idea is to unbalance the opponent. Same in judo. And so we do a lot of drills to simulate that feel. And then hopefully over enough time, it just becomes an acquired trait. Push-pull, so let's say, right, they're engaging like this, grabbing around the back and I'm pushing too hard, someone steps to the side and turns, you know, then I know, I went too far. You know, I wasn't, 
I wasn't changing my direction in a smart way or, you know, or if I'm pulling and someone just pushes into me at that moment, you know, I go tumbling back, I was leaning back too far. You can grab anywhere and do it, but definitely when we're doing, when we're practicing techniques or doing live training, it definitely matters. It's all about controlling your posture, understanding how, you know, where your strongest place, where your strongest uh, position is uh, if someone else has a you know a separate position and it all sounds like a lot to take in but you would be surprised in just a small amount of time you know engaging with people like that you learn quickly matters if I pull up or if I pull down all that stuff definitely makes a difference just to help them learn how to drive with their legs and use their hands and push it really starts to develop everything kind of working together when they're doing their exercises and they're ultimately their judo training well you know it, although our focus is Olympians I, some of my greatest successes, are from the everyday student. Uh, I have two, two success stories that um, I'm very proud of. One was a kid who came to me in my first school in Andover, and when he first came, he has Asperger's syndrome, and when he first came to the dojo, he could barely walk. I remember the first day he ran around my, my mat, he couldn't control his muscles, and he went right through the wall and put a hole in the wall of the drywall. And, and that young man turned from that type of athlete into a black belt. He stayed with judo his whole life. He became physically very strong. He, he finished in the top of the country at, at nationals a few times, and now he, he's doing a, an internship at, at our Harvard University. He's graduated from college, he has his master's, and he, now he's over at Harvard. So that's a success story that I'm very proud of. Cesar Anza, Little Dragons. No, up. We're gonna bust out the crash pads, we're gonna do that Morote Sayanagi. Okay, what's Morote Sayanagi mean in English? Raise your hand and tell me. No. Lily? What's Morote Sayanagi? Shh, sit quietly, little dragons. Crush your legs, Gabby, crush your legs. No, shh, don't yell at answers. Salome. Two handed shoulders, though, very good. Everyone say Morote Sayanagi. Two handed shoulder throw. Nice job. Little Dragons, quick review. I want to see your elbow go in your partner's armpit, back on their belly, my feet have to be together. In between my partner's feet, pick them up my hips, turn, throw, look behind you. Little Dragons, I mean, uh, it's hard, even when you think about other sports, is it's hard to keep them focused all the time and, uh, you know, keep them engaged and, you know, focusing on a goal or making their technique better or even, you know, just kind of focusing on them acknowledging that they're trying to get better at something, you know, working on a goal. But here we have a lot of success. So for the recreational kids, like the little dragons and the confident kids and uh, basic intermediate students, right now it's just to learn the fundamentals of judo and really get the benefits of the sport. They're like the extra shot that's in my coffee because I probably got a coffee in my hand already. When you have them in a group, they all respond to commands. We make sure, you know, you know little dragon, focus, you know, concentrate and everything like that, you know. Um, be respectful to yourself and others. Those are all pillars of judo. So um, we find that it's just really successful and we, we get them pretty engaged. It used to be that at that age, it was judo was one of the only sports that had something organized for kids that young. Um, but it's also more, I think it's very important to start children early in the sport of judo because it's not about the techniques of, of the sport of judo that they benefit from. It's about all of the, the coordination drills that we do. The kid becomes much more aware of their body. They become physically stronger in all areas of their, their body and it will make that child a much better athlete at whatever they decide to do later on in life. And it's really to kind of learn those life lessons that judo can teach somebody. Um, if they ever decide that they want to compete, they have that option. If they don't, then that's fine too, and we'll teach them, help them, you know, help them att attain their black belt. And ultimately, the goal for some of those kids would have them come back and be instructors. Judo is all about giving back, mutual benefit, and welfare. So we teach them all the no judo I know, the way they could say thank you, or the way they can kind of show their appreciation of the sport would be to come back when they're older. I think the best part of teaching kids is that um, it, it kind of reminds me that although I am serious about my my career, that. Sometimes it's kind of not so serious that I have to enjoy it because I forget that sometimes. Um, but it, it, it just teaches me that, like I know I tell them like, oh, jump higher or run faster, but it, I don't know, it's like a good reminder that I'm, I'm also human. I'm not, not, I'm not a master or an expert. I think exercises are important because you don't just have to be in good shape for judo. 
I mean, being healthy and being physically fit is important in all aspects of life. So, again, it doesn't matter if they're a phenomenal judo athlete, but if they're in good shape, they can they can play a whole game of basketball or hockey or soccer without getting tired while everyone else on the team is gasping for air. I mean, if they're in great shape, and again, that can help them everywhere, not just judo. All of the judo exercises that we do at the school uh, serve a purpose. Um, and they're typically picked up from traveling around the world at some of the best judo dojos you know, in the world and, and taking and cherry picking the best exercises that we've been exposed to and bringing them back to the school and we give those to the kids to do and the adults as well. But basically, they're unorthodox for the normal person, but they're not typical things you would do anywhere else. But in judo, it's to build certain muscles one, to prevent injury, to get your, your body warmed up to do the work that it's about to do on the judo mat. Two, it's to build strength in the important muscles for the sport of judo, which happens to be your upper body, your lats need to be strong to pull the person. Um, you know, your forearms need to be strong to hold on to the judo gi so that you can hold on longer and, and execute throws better. A lot of power comes from the legs in the sport and the core muscles. So wheelbarrow walks, training the upper body, training the core and then a lot of balance techniques. Being physically fit is super important in everything you do. And I think that's one of the lessons that people need to start to understand is that you gotta be in shape, you gotta be, and you feel better. If you feel better, you can function better. If you can function better, you're gonna be more productive, you're gonna feel better about yourself, you're gonna be one of the more, uh, the higher kids picked on the team when you play other sports. So I think that's, it's very, very important. Right now we have a team of athletes who are in their teenage years we call the storm team the special team of role models which we work with every week and we teach them how to teach judo some of those kids on that team like devin and darcy and Jaden and katrina are on our competition team so they'll train here for they'll train four days a week sometimes two hours or more and then we'll teach them how to teach my name is katrina blouse katrina is another one of those success stories I've been doing judo for two years. It'll be three years this October. My dad was a real big martial arts enthusiast. And one day on his way to work, he was taking a shortcut on this road that leads here. And he saw the Pedro's judo sign. And he was like, nah, that can't be him. The same guy he saw in the Black Belt magazine just a few weeks before. So he went in and he realized, oh man, this is the same guy. And a little bit later, I started doing judo. Again, the girl came in with zero self-esteem. Before judo, I was very unconfident. I didn't have a great sense of being me and being, thinking I was a good person to be. Afraid of her own shadow, afraid to talk to anybody, couldn't look anybody in the eye, would just look down and very, very soft-spoken. After judo, I really have a sense of the self-confidence and the thoughts that, hey, I am, I'm not a total failure. I can actually do stuff, and it's great to have that. And now she trains in our elite class with our Olympians. She's gone to Junior Nationals, and she finished third at the Junior Nationals this year in the sport. As an instructor, I really like helping the kids. It's great to know that you can help somebody at least once. She's now transformed into a very fit, strong, confident young lady who's excited about life. My name is Devin Leggett and I'm a senpai here and I've been doing judo for two years. Uh, I've been instructed here for about six months now. Judo teaches life lessons, you know. Um, most sports are done by yourself or with a team, but judo you actually need somebody else to work with to get better and through that you, you learn socialization, you learn humility, you learn respect, you learn for others and yourself, you learn perseverance. In judo, somebody's getting knocked down every day. As long as you focus on being safe and focus on the stuff that you've been taught, you'll be okay and like you can get thrown over and over and get right back up every time. As long as you like keep those fundamentals and practice that every time. By Devin getting thrown so many times, getting knocked down so many times, he's learning you know, perseverance, get up, get up, you can't win if you don't try type of atti attitude. Um, but he's a very nice boy, he has good, good morals, good character, uh, he's a good role model for others, and that's why we take, we ask those kids and invite those kids to become junior instructors. 
Like before judo, I wouldn't want to like talk or speak in front of classes or anything. But like as you teach and speak in front of a bunch of little kids, get more confidence in yourself and be able to talk to groups and be talking in school and stuff more. And it just gives you more confidence. Or peer leaders. And they're put in a role where they actually help the younger kids all the time. And I think through that teaching and through that status as a role model, their confidence goes up, right? Their, their ability to, to work with others and help others and understand the sport of judo is elevated. Um, and I think they see then the relationship that their teacher has with them in, when they're trying to communicate to the young kids. It's all, it's all a, a formula for, for the development of the entire dojo. It helps build a lot of your confidence and it helps you get better and be more confident in yourself. And you'll also, it'll give you something to do and keep you in shape. And coming here, there's a lot of like the Olympians who come here and everything. And uh, it just helps you keep you in shape and build your confidence and help you be a better person. I am Jaden Petrulis and I am part of the Junior Olympic team here. And I am a instructor of Team Force. Junior Team Force. I've been doing Judo for about two, two and a half years. You know, Judo isn't just all sports and winning. It also disciplines you, makes you do better. It's more than just a sport to me and that's how it should be to everyone else. To me, it's always been important throughout my whole entire life to be the best. You know, not only just to be the best that I can be, but just the best because that's me, I want that as my title. And the Olympics are, is a good thing to aim for because the Olympics shows you know, how far you've made it, how hard you've trained. And you know, I'm not here just because I'm here, I'm here because I worked for it and this is my dream and I want to do this. It's no surprise to me that a young kid like, like Jaden would want to go to the Olympics. And I think he more than anybody else in the country has an opportunity to do just so because he has the technical expertise, the coaching, the guidance, the direction, and, and the formula for success. So he has a very good chance of doing so. Um, he's young, he needs tons of experience. Right now he's only an orange belt, you know, so his journey is, is just starting, but the kid is, is physically gifted. He picks things up extremely quick. He has good teachers and good role models. So as long as Jaden puts in the work, and makes the, the commitment physically to making it happen, then anything's possible. I'm Darcy S. Eleven. It's important for people to do judo because it teaches focus, discipline, and it doesn't only do that, it's also fun because you can make good friends here. It's helped me focus a little bit more and it's helped me get better grades over the years and um, I think being yelled at a lot for talking during class has helped me during um, schoolwork too. I want to be an Olympian too someday and I want to make, I want to be really successful in judo. To really make a commitment to say that you want to be an Olympian, you had better be willing to spend a good majority of your life training, sacrificing, Judo's, for me, is the best, best club here, so I know there's not enough good things I can say about it. It's a sport where, you know, you can continue on forever. You can do, I'll be doing this until the day I die. You know, even if I can't do throws and I'm an old, decrepit man, you know, it's, it's I'll still be doing Judo, it's, it's about community. You're never responsible for anything by yourself. You always have to have a great support staff and a great um, coaching staff. I mean, Jimmy and, Jimmy and his father helped me out tremendously I mean, they're, they're the people. They're the best coaches in the country. So when you have the best, you have the best resources at your, at your side, how can you fail? How can you go wrong? Judo can be one of the best activities you will ever do for you or your child. It would be one of the best decisions you've ever made that we transform lives, we help people achieve success, and we truly do care about all of our students.